Yeah, so I've been really interested in major evolutionary transformations for my entire career of different kinds. And what's so appealing about being an evolutionary biologist nowadays is that there are many tools we can use to provide evidence for these huge transformations. So I really fell in love with the transformation of fish to, to land-living animal or fish to tetrapod creatures with, with limbs. Uh, for the simple reason is that we can go out and actually find evidence of this you know, event that happened you know, over 375 million years ago. And you know, that just so appeals to me, you know, being outside, cracking rocks, and then discovering an object which can really affect the way you think about the world and the way we think about the natural world. Yeah, this one, you know, finding uh, this fossil was, you know, six years in the making. We started it in 1998, and for a number of years we were just chugging along with the goal of finding it. I mean, we actually designed the expeditions to, to, to see this thing. But for a while, we thought we'd be real failures. Uh, in July of 2004 is when we saw it in the field for the first time. And the minute I saw it, it was like a snout sticking out of the rocks. I knew I spent six years, and we found what we were looking for. And it was really wonderful. But what's amazing about that time, we found the thing, right? So I knew we were successful. But now I became worried, can we get it out of the rock in time? Because we only had a few more weeks up in the Arctic, and it was a lot of work to get it out. So, um, But then, you know, coming home, there was so much discovery. You know, the preparators working in the laboratory, they do the hard work. You know, they sit there for days on end removing, you know, grains of rock, you know, with a needle under a microscope. And it was those folks who really made the huge discoveries. And that was happening over months, you know. Um, it was just a fabulous time. This was in 2005. Well, what's so important is it doesn't change our evolutionary story. I mean, and how it really confirms the evolutionary story we've been thinking about for a long period of time. That, you know, land-living animals share many similarities with certain kinds of fish. And not just any fish, certain kinds of fish. Those fish which have lungs and gills and other things. Um, so what this shows is a beautiful sort of transitional set of ana anatomical features of, you know, part of it looks like a land-living animal with a flat head with eyes on top, uh, a neck, uh, portions of the, the fin. But it has a fin with fin rays. It has scales. So it's a real mix. And so the importance of the discovery is not only the fossil, because it, along with all the other fossils we know about, really tells a lot. It doesn't work alone. It works with all the other fossils that have been collected around the world. But the key thing is this is a story of discovery. It's a story of how the paleontological method, how we as paleontologists can go outside and make predictions about places to find fossils. And that's what science is all about, and that's what makes it so fun. Okay, every time you bend your head back and forth, every time you bend your wrist, you can thank this fish and its evolutionary cousins.